Reader is a bit of an unfortunate title here. Setting aside its more modern use, there's no actual breeding going on in this game. It's also an early strong candidate for the worst thing you could have for your Famicom disk system. It's buggy, to the point that it crashed on me the first time I loaded it. Many of the systems don't work correctly, and there's zero game balance for what little gameplay exists. The concept of Breeder is that you design a robot, and then you make the robots fight. You have no control over the robots while they fight. The only input you have is assigning it stats. Now this wasn't a wildly unusual concept in the mid-80s. Something similar to this was used as a programming exercise and competition. People would write small little programs to control a virtual robot, and then the programs would compete head-to-head. -head. Reader gives you 8 save slots for robots, and there are 15 stats that you can assign points into. There is no point limit. If you wanted to max out all the stats, that's fine. Theoretically, you could balance out your robot fights by their point total. You could pit 2,000 point robots against each other and see who designs the better one. Now I didn't do that, and that's because the total for a flat average 5 in all stats is 900 points. And I built 8 robots on that point total, and had them fight in a tournament. Before I get to that though, you need to know what the stats are. Speed lets the robots move faster, but it increases fuel consumption. Robots seem to move based on ticks, so a higher speed means less time between them doing something. Dexterity is how quickly the robots turn, while armor reduces the damage that the robot receives. All robots start with 200 health, so you'll only see the effect of that when they get hit. Torque is how much damage physical attacks do, that would be punching and kicking. Jumping is how often robots like to jump, it also affects them evading combat. Walk determines how the robot moves. It's rated 0 to 10, but this one's free and it seems to mainly affect what evasive patterns they'll take. I should point out that the breeder manual is not helpful here. Laser is how much damage the robot's ranged attack does. Lucky is, well, luck. I think it's for critical hits, but I can't be sure. IQ is how smart your robot is. I could not figure out exactly what that affects. L-Dist is how far your ranged shot goes. Kick and punch are how effective your kicks and punches are. Charge determines the delay between ranged attacks. Mind is how aggressive the robot is. If it's high, it'll chase somebody down and fight more, while if it's low, it'll try to avoid combat. And finally, jump dist is how far the robot can jump. That's another free stat. The only other thing you can input is what chassis the robot uses, and you do that by hitting select. So there's two legs, four legs, hover, wield, that kind of thing. As far as I could tell, these are only for appearance. Okay, now that you know how the game works as well as anybody does, let's introduce our competitors. First up, we have Mario. Dead average in every stat, except jump distance, of course. Next up, Link. Link has maxed out physical attacks, effectively no ranged attacks, strong armor, and is a bit of a lunkhead. Then there's Samus, specced out for ranged attacks. Not much for movement, though. Probably used to rolling into a ball to get around. Fresh from making sweaters, we have Teacher. Super lucky, kind of smart. Doesn't like to jump, but otherwise all around. Then we have the veteran of hundreds of RPGs, the People's Champion, Mmm. They've opted for a speedier build with some strong lasers. Fresh from Transylvania, we have Belmondo. A physical powerhouse who's got a bit of a stiff jump and still has a few ranged options available. Takamaru has to move fast to stay ahead of the ninjas that he regularly faces, and he's got the swordsmanship-derived power, but he also has a bit of a glass jaw. Finally, there's everyone's favorite warehouse keeper, Sokoban. He might not be the fastest, but he can push a box around a corner easily, and he's got plenty of torque in that motor from shoving things. That's the feel of competitors, and here's the bracket for the single elimination tournament that they are taking part in. I'll give you a few moments to call your bookies and place your bets. After you save your game from the main menu, you select the two robots that you're going to fight. Round 1, Mario vs. Link. There are two ways for a fight to end. Either one robot runs out of hit points, or they run out of fuel. 
And this match is a good example of how this game goes so wrong. Mario and Link effectively aren't hurting each other. Instead, it's just a long, long, long match where Link just burns out his fuel way before Mario does. It took 4 minutes and 51 seconds for this fight to resolve, as nothing happened the whole time. If you want players to be building their robots and getting excited to pit them against each other, something exciting has to happen in the match. And unfortunately, most breeder matches are going to wind up like this. Mario advances to the semifinals. In match 2, it's Teacher versus Samus, and Teacher is just dominating in this match. Maybe due to that high luck stat. Samus is on the ropes, spending most of the match just running around the arena aimlessly. Samus is down to 13 health while the teacher is over 150. But then Samus gets behind Teacher, unleashes a barrage of super missiles, and it's all over. This was the most exciting match that happened the entire tournament. And that's just a complete bizarre turn that it suddenly took. It's N versus Bill Mondo in the third match. And this match showcases another major problem with Breeder. Melee attacks are worthless. Even assuming robots will ever come together, which is a big assumption, they almost never do any damage, even if you have the stats pumped up all the way. The only thing that matters in Breeder are ranged attacks. Anything else is just throwing points away. Mm has the better ranged attacks and completely dominates the match. The Takamaru vs. Sokoban match is another long one, Neither of them really affect each other, and so this drags on until one of them runs out of fuel. The informational display during combat is totally worthless since you have no control over anything. The health of each robot is displayed at the top, along with the distance between them. The icons indicate what action a robot is taking at any given moment. The circle with the line tells you what direction the robot's moving in. And you've got their fuel count. Takamaru runs out of fuel first, but doesn't die because the game is incredibly buggy. Sokoban does die when it runs out of fuel, thus Takamaru's the winner, I guess. Don't cry for Sokoban, though. According to the game stats, it won two matches that it never played in. In the first match of the semifinals, it's Mario vs. Samus. Mario slowly whittles down Samus' health, and there's no miraculous turnaround this time for Samus. Mario eventually takes the match. In the N versus Takamaru match, N takes advantage of Takamaru's glass jaw, rapidly chewing through his opponent. So in the finals, it's Mario versus N. Finally, a match with a bit of action, as this one quickly becomes a slugfest. And by slugs, I mean laser shots, because the punches don't do anything. It's Mario that lands the killing blow, taking the entire tournament. What I've given you here is not just watching Breeder, it's also the experience of playing it. Except it's even more boring because I cut to the exciting bits. And I'm using exciting very loosely. Reader is not a very well regarded game in Japan. Though I did find a few people who had memories of running robot tournaments similar to what I just did with their friends. But that's a long way to go for a fairly boring outcome. Reader is truly awful, barely functional, and isn't even reasonable at the limited goals it sets for itself. The most exciting thing in this game is its logo. Shame that they use it for this game instead of an album.